Good morning, guys. Mm. It's really nice to have good coffee at home again. And to have the house smell like coffee. <laughs> the kitchen's looking real nice again. It was feeling pretty crowded with all the construction stuff scattered around, but starting to spread out so it's starting to feel big again that's a good thing so i finally got some good sleep last night had a big old bourbon late last night to wind down and slept like a baby today is just going to be i think a continuation of what i was doing last night pretty much after the video i'm going to be unpacking a lot i think i'm going to do my photography gear first because that should free up at least three bins. I've got a ton of stuff in here. It's just a lot of big bulky stuff. Some that was from inside in the studio, some that was outside in the storage shed, which I kept more gear in, and a little bit that was in the garage. I think, I think all four of these right here can be unpacked pretty quickly. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring all that stuff in. Some stuff will be set up, some will be going into the closet, but I wanna make a, a big hole, I wanna make a big dent in this garage. I can't do the garage door opener, I can't do the garage storage units or anything like that, or reset up my desks or bring out the shelves or anything until this is clear. Now the wife is gonna be parking on this side and I wanna keep this wall completely clear for her, or at least, just put stuff way down at the end. I wanted her to be able to open the door. That was kind of a, uh, the only thing that sucked for her side in the old place, we had the built-in cabinets, which came out to pretty much where the edge of the garage door is. And they were nice for storage. It was the only storage we had in the house. There, there was no attic storage and we didn't have closets like we did in this place. So everything was in the garage, pretty much along this wall. And the only thing I wanna keep over here is the mower and uh, the yard stuff, but you know, just from like here down. So here, I want it clear. The, the toolbox will be back on my side over here. I want this clear for her so she can open her door and get out in the car and stuff like that. So I want to plan to put everything over here. I liked having my, my uh, shelving units here. These come down. This is two stacked on top of each other. I might keep it this way, but you know, it was really convenient having them side by side and having a long workbench. They were at this level here. And I wanna do that because I'm, I'm considering not ordering the actual workbench, just for space reasons. You know, this isn't a huge garage, it's a slightly oversized double. And we don't have laundry facilities here, so there is a little bit of space more up in the front, but not that much. I've got two large storage cabinets that I have to build, and the garbage can has to stay in the corner. Or, you know, maybe I could, no, no, it has to stay over there because look how much it overhangs the garage door. I couldn't put that on her side because she couldn't pull in. Where the heck are you supposed to store this garbage bin? If you have two cars in the garage, which, you know what, even in this neighborhood is freaking rare. Everybody parks in the street in the driveway, mostly the driveway, but, it, the houses you see without any cars, they're vacant. That one across the street there, that's vacant. It's 1900 a month if anyone wants to rent in there. <laughs> but I don't get it, man. These houses have tons of space and storage and people still don't park in the garage. They use them as storage. It, it's a Florida thing. It's weird as hell to me. I'm from Michigan, for those of you that don't know. And for the most part, people didn't do that up north. They parked in the garage, you know? But then again, we had basements. So people here in Florida, for those of you who have never lived here, or, you know, don't really visit here, people in Florida use the garage like people up north use the basement. That's just the way it is. I like to use the garage for freaking vehicles. So <laughs> this is not for me. This is, this is killing me here. So this side will be mine for the bikes. And I'm sticking to two bikes for now because I like having that amount of free space. It's really convenient to have the space to work on a bike and store a bike and walk around and not feel crowded, not have to move a bike. I was considering getting three at one time and a lot of people said, you know, hey, you should get another bike. And I do want another bike. 
but I'm gonna limit it to two at once. If I had to gotten a house with a three car garage, yep, I would have had at least another bike. That was the primary reason why I wanted a three car garage, but it wasn't in the cards, so this is what it is. So the garbage can has to stay there, which is fine because I'm parking the FJR at the back, just like the old place, and it comes in at an angle. So then I'll have the two benches, maybe two benches, I might stack them, just like I said, because of space concerns. I guess it's not that big of a deal to use this as a workbench. Oh, you know what? I could put a light underneath here. That might work out really well. Yeah, then I could leave them stacked here, which still gives me the same storage space. It just puts it more vertical. And obviously I've got the room. <laughs> yeah, that's a good plan. I'll just stick a light under there. Okay, so garbage can, then those racks, that'll take it out to about here. And then that leaves me this to do something with. I've got two cabinets and let's see, that makes it about six feet of cabinets. Um, I will probably start them right after. That way I can kind of leave this corner open if I want to angle something in for a little bit more room. And if I put the cabinets down here, the door would kind of bang into the, to the wash bin here. I don't know. I'm going to have to set them up and see. I got plenty of room to work with. So that's a little ways down the road, but okay. I, I like just roughing things out in my head. But anyway, once I get all that done, I can throw up the garage door opener, throw all the accessories on it. The one cool thing I'm excited for to see how it works is the laser pointing system. So the, for those that don't know about the Ryobi system, it's modular. So you plug all these modules around the garage door opener. They're showing the, the battery backup unit right there. So you can put a Ryobi battery, the same ones, that you plug into your accessories and your tools into the garage door opener. It does two things. It charges the batteries, so it gives you another charging unit, and it operates as a battery backup. So if you lose power at the house, you can still open and close the garage door 50 to 100 times on the battery power. So you can still operate your door. I've, that's one of the pains of when you lose power, you know, you have to pull your cord, go into manual mode, but then you can't really shut the door because there's no torque to really get it that far. So you're kind of stuck if you ever open your door, it's gonna be stuck open. Well, not with this system, you're on battery power. So you're good to go. But anyway, I got a laser pointer system that plugs in, I think to the rear slot here, maybe the side slot, I don't know, it's just for her, but it puts it's a laser pointer. So it shines on her dash, and instead of having the hang tennis ball that we had on the old place when she pulls in, because she's terrible at parking, like a lot of people are, this just shows a dot. So when it gets at the right point in your car, you're done. Got a bunch of other stuff, Bluetooth speaker that will integrate with Alexa and my smart home. Um, a really long extension cord with three outlets so I no longer have to keep a big extension cord on a hook and drag it down. It's just a retractable cord built into the opener, whole bunch of stuff. So I'm excited about that, get that all going. Um, mower, I'm going to put over there. So yeah, okay, that's a plan. Need to find a spot for all my charcoal. I've got, I don't know, a dozen bags or so left of the big 20 pounders. Um, those will probably go along there just fine because her front door is going to be like near the edge of the electrical box right about here. So this, I just have to keep this clear from this forward. Plenty of room. All right, well, let's get unpacking. So I identified all the bins of stuff that can come in and there's one more out there, but I need the wife's help lifting it. She went out to a late lunch with some friends. All of this stuff is photography gear and a little bit of office stuff. So that's gonna make a huge dent. But before I do that, I forgot there's one project that I need to do. The shower valve is still a little loose. I tightened up the handle, I tightened up the trim plate and it's mounting bolts, but it's still, still got a little give, and I'm afraid it's the pipes. It's either the pipes or the cartridge, but there's no leak, at least not externally. So unless it's leaking in the wall, um, hopefully it's just a loose clamp on the pipe, but there's, there's a wiggle there to the whole thing. Handle's tight, so I'm gonna have to Take the handle off, set screw there. Two screws holding on the escutcheon. 
I think he's got it silicone. Yeah, there's a bead of silicone around here. Shouldn't do that. If anything, just use a little plumber's putty just to seal it. You just want water to not be able to get behind it here, but you do not need to silicone these to the wall. That's what these two screws are for to hold it. There should be just a little cutout about this size. So all of this should be tile, but we gotta take it apart and see. And the valve in the cartridge should be directly attached to the pipes. There should be a hot and a cold coming up. This is a one mixing valve. And because this whole thing is moving, that leads me to believe something is not secured correctly to the studs or blocking. Yeah, I don't know. We'll have to get in there and see. I want to see what's on the other side. Okay, we do have a small access plate. It is kind of midway up. Shower valves somewhere right about here. It looks like there's been some repair done too. Uh, it's really showing up on camera, but there's definitely been some patching to this wall. Hmm. Nothing came up in the home inspection, but something's been done. Let's pop this open and see what we can see from here. Well, this panel may have even been added after the fact. It's not quite straight, but I'm not sure. Okay, what do we got? I can't actually... Electrical wire. It just stapled there, bends back around. I'm gonna have to use the phone as my viewfinder here because I can't see anything. Do not drop the phone into the wall. Okay, so that just, whoa, that screw is precariously close. Oh no, it's well below it. Okay, whew. All right, so anyway, looking at these pipes, huh, PVC pipes, interesting. Uh, Is that the shower valve? I'm like, I can't see. I'm gonna have to play back this video to see what's going on there. But if that's a shower, that's why the whole thing is shaken. I do not see any bracing. Maybe that one screw? That might just be the trim plate. Wow, that is janky looking. All right, stand by. I gotta play back this video because the phone is out of view. Got the handle off, everything looks fine so far. Let's take off these two screws here and then cut away the silicone to get that plate off. After several razor passes, finally getting this loose, I definitely think somebody has been in here because it feels like there are two different kinds of sealers holding this on. Let's take a look. All right, so that's what I was feeling, this foam ring. And then they did just use clear silicone up at the top. A little bit of an overkill, but not as bad as I thought. I, I thought it was all the way around, but it was mostly just at the top. And yep, there's definitely a second application because this is a clear uh, plumber's putty right here. This is what you're supposed to use. This stuff is still malleable and it just forms like a putty just to keep it watertight. So somebody has definitely been in here. Let's get a better look. Okay, so pipe is definitely wobbling. Uh, these are what the trim plate screws go into just to draw it tight against the tile. But these pipes are supposed to have their own bracket and there is nothing there. This thing is just sitting here. I can see two screws and you can see them right there and right there. And those are coming in from the top and they are securing this horizontal pipe to the bracket. And they are not as tight as they should be. So that's what this rattle is from. I do not think I have any way of getting in there to that screw and I'm definitely not cutting a hole in the wall just to do it. So I gotta figure out some other way of bracing this pipe to that bracket. And you can see the brackets held onto the wall by these black screws here, and I'm gonna assume yep, there are two more at the bottom. So that's just like a, a, a literal bracket. And then this piece goes in kind of like a closet system. 
so you can attach these pipes anywhere along the drywall without having studs. Normally this is against a stud and you've got like a C-shaped bracket that just bolts and, and clamps it in place. So I got to figure something out here, how to secure this in place so I don't have any kind of wobble. Both of those screws are floating. So I think even trying to get in there to tighten them isn't going to do any good. I'm, there's no way I can get torque on those. I'll figure something out. If I had some kind of like right angle bit driver, like an Allen wrench, but with a Phillips tip on it, I could get that in there and at least see if I could get some torque. This right screw is actually wobbling in the socket, so it's loose, loose. It would turn. I have a feeling that one is just not far behind it. So I'm going to see if I can tighten them somehow. Well, that would be a no-go. Even if I found a tool to get in there, I would need a 90 degree twist just to go facet to facet. So what I think I'm going to do is just use JB Weld right here in these creases where the pipe meets the bracket. It naturally wants to sit straight, so that's at least good. If I could just put a couple little dabs of JB Weld right there, that'll hold it in place. All I'm holding it against is the torque of turning the handle. I'm not pulling or pushing. That's not going to be any stress on those as joints. So I think that'll do it. Luckily, this debris is out of the way. I'll just brush it real quick. I don't see any evidence of leaks at all anywhere. So that's good. I think that'll do it. That'll be a nice, quick, easy fix. I don't have any, so I'll have to go to Lowe's. But in the meantime, I'll clean up all this silicone and see if I can find my plumber's putty. I know I've got a little can of it somewhere, but if not, I'll pick one up. Well, that figures. I find my JV Weld, but I can't find my plumber's putty. The one thing I thought I knew where it was uh, might be over here. I have so much crap of garage stuff still packed. I'm not sure where it all is. Is this it? Please, please, please. Oh, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Haha, <laughs> good to go. Epoxy and one spare Ikea wrench. We'll get this mixed up. All right, so I wouldn't go jumping around on it, but we'll see in an hour after this cures if that is good enough to just hold it in place. I think it'll work. If not, plan B. Huh, that's pretty cool. The nest is automatically learning already to how we use things, and it's in airwave mode, which is running the fan without the compressor to save money, but circulate the air enough to keep it cooler longer. Pretty neat. I just swapped out the two very small fluorescent bulbs that were in this fan for the LEDs. A little bit of a difference. These LEDs are only the 60 watt variety. I probably should have got the hundreds in here just because this uh, diffuser is, is a yellow color and it really eats up a lot of the light. It's quite opaque. So I might swap those out next time I go and get some better bulbs, but it's at least a, a nicer difference. They go into like a low power and then kick into the high as they ramp up the LEDs. These are just the real basic GE bulbs. There are definitely better ones out there. Um, and there's enough space in there where I can put in normal sized bulbs. It's not like it needs the real compact ones. I could probably just put a couple of the ones I got for the garage uh, outside. Those are super bright. Those would look really nice in here. And, I, and those are daylight. So bouncing through this yellow diffuser would still give me a soft white effect. But uh, in here, I need to see if I actually need it. She'll be using the room more than me. She's making this her display room. Starting to move stuff in here. But to me, this is just going to be to grab uh, product shots. Don't do a lot of it. 99% of the work I'm going to do in here is for cigars. So I just need a little working space here. Put my products on. Got to set up all my lights. But that's just going to be it. I'm just needing a little footprint. And this is going to be her desk. Do whatever. And, you know, whatever she wants to do with the rest of the room. So... If she needs more light, I'll switch, switch the bulbs out, but my soft boxes are gonna light up the room all on their own. It's funny, I've got all this quote unquote big stuff that was big in the old place and I had to find places to store it and I've just got room to spare, <laughs> whatever I wanna put in here. This is a big background stand system for holding up to 14 foot wide muslins. Not gonna use it here, but you know, it's something I wanna keep just in case I need it. And that's uh, part of a 10-foot parabolic reflector. You pair that with a 
really strong studio light, you can overpower the sun at noon outside. It is insanely reflective. All right, let's cure it up. I think we have success. Let's button it back up. So here's what you're supposed to do. I cleaned off all the silicone. It's, I used about a half a tube worth. It was just a lot. So you just roll out a Play-Doh snake and you only need it on the top half. The water isn't gonna get in from anywhere on the sides or bottom. That's why there's this little channel here in case anything does get in. Usually from here, it just drips out the bottom and doesn't go in your wall. So you just goop it on with a snake and it'll squeeze out and you just razor the edge clean after you bolt it to the wall. So let's go ahead and get it back on. Get these two screws mounted. Get our adapter ring back on and tighten our handle down, razor that clean and we'll be done. All right, there we go. Now it's not 100% rock solid like it would be with copper pipes and a C-clamp. There's still a little bit of flex, but it's not the pipe moving in the bracket this time. It's just the fact that it's a long extension and it's PVC pipes and a bracket that's kind of just sticking out supporting it. So that's just the way it is with construction. There's nothing else I can do short of tearing apart that back wall and replumbing and putting in bracing and clamps and it's not worth it just to get rid of this. But the whole thing isn't wobbling anymore, so I'm calling it done. Time to lay down a carpet. We've got three of them. This is the smallest one and it's going to go in the master bedroom. Chloe's busy supervising. You helping Chloe? You look super comfy. Yeah. And there we go. Now we've all got something nice to step on. We get out of bed and that looks good. And even Chloe has a carpet. So a couple of you have suggested to fix the doors that very slowly close on their own, especially since I lubed all the hinges. Take one of the pins out and give it a whack with a hammer to put a slight dimple somewhere in it. I think uh, the, the gist is to give it a little bit of resistance, just enough to hold it where you place it. So I'm gonna go ahead and give that a shot. One little minor bend later. Success. Thank you very much for the tip, guys. Now to do the other doors. I won't have to use rags to hold them open. Two down, one to go. And that's three. All right, beautiful. This one took an extra heavy divot, but it did the job. Now, as with all the other projects around here, I'm doing one thing and I find something else to fix. This is the first time I've opened this guest side of the lanai door and I've got major sticking up in that corner here and it's the actual door frame it's not quite hung right it jars left just up in like the last eight inches or so and you can see it where it where the light gap is there it's rubbing so it's quite difficult it's actually squishing the hinge a little bit as you force the door shut so i think the easiest thing to do would just to be a, a quick plane at the top um, probably eight inches of the door and just give it a quick coat of paint. Nothing I need to do right now because this door isn't used by us, but definitely something that needs to be done. And of course, this handle is just as jacked. Hold on, let me put this stuff down. As the master bedroom was completely loose and it's this way because I can only imagine it wasn't quite built right, same as the master door over there was. And what I had to do was take it all apart and reassemble everything correctly. And I still have to fix the striker plate because it's not lubed enough. And when it's correct, it's hitting too flat and doesn't wedge it closed. So just a, a comedy of errors here, but I'll add this to the list, fixing the door. We're trying out another Chinese buffet. This one looks way better than the one right by us. This stuff looks good. You get hibachi too. And good sushi. Well, the sushi is really good. And now to eat them out of the best thing, crawfish. It smells good. It's 
spicy Cajun. Oh yeah. It's three and four later. <laughs> Well, that was one of the best Chinese buffets I've ever had, so I'm glad we found this one. It's at, uh, what is this? Bruce B. Downs and 56. Got some wall art up in the guest bath, and I just noticed I didn't get it quite far left enough to cover up that paint spot. But it's centered with the towel rack, so. I guess that's the way it'll have to be. You really can't see it with the naked eye. It's only showing up on the phone. But the way those lights are thrown off the light directly to the side, seriously, you can't see a thing. It looks more like that. So unless you're staring right at it, you can't notice. Well, I made it through three bins, the rest of these two here for her tomorrow. And I made another big hole, got half the studio set up. Got a bunch of my lights, got everything blocked out. Need to get the rest of the light stands, build the rest of the soft boxes. Got most of the stuff packed away nicely in the closet. Decided to put it back down on the ground. This is the way I've used it for years. You can put it up on the stands, but it's just so much easier to control the light. I just flag the sides here with some white material and it basically becomes a white soft box just by putting a light onto the ground. I put one up high to light the back. I laid down one uh, low on a little bag of beads there and it just bounces and fills the bottom, works really well. And then two soft boxes, however I want them from the sides angled down. So I get reflection, I get direct light, I control the bottom, I control the back. All is good, easy peasy. I'm gonna bring that glass shelf unit in here somewhere, probably put it in the corner, shift the desk down a little bit, because uh, there's gonna be a soft box pretty much in front of the window, so I won't want anything back in here. Although, you know what, that might work very well for uh, supplies, because I'm not into them all that well. It's just cigar stuff that, you know, I just have, I need a place to put them, and photography stuff. I got bins like this just filled with supplies and cords and all kinds of accessories. So yeah, I'll put the, the shelf back here, plenty of room, and that'll work out. She moved her stuff over to this side. There's still more to unpack. <laughs> All right, well, that was a productive day. See you guys tomorrow.